opportunities. Because for-profit companies are not and should not be NGOs in disguise or governments in disguise. They all have very important but different roles and responsibilities. So I'm particularly interested where companies are using their commitment to sustainability to help them to find new insights that leads them to develop new products and services, new ways of doing business, taking new routes to the marketplace. So in my own country, for example, I look at Unilever, which is committed to double the size of the business and to halve its environmental impact. And when Paul Polman, the CEO of Unilever, made that commitment, he was very clear. That we don't have all of the answers to how we are going to achieve this. But by setting out a big, clear, strategic vision and goal for the business, it is more likely that we will force our people around the world to go and look in unusual places for innovations that will help us both to improve our business performance and to improve sustainable development. And let me give you another illustration of how that is happening. It's in a Dutch headquartered company called Desso. And they make floor coverings. Very often in the corporate responsibility world, we're familiar with the story of Interface, and it's a wonderful story of the way that they have transformed that company. But Desso is another business in the same sector that by making a commitment, in their case, to something called cradle to cradle, that everything that goes into their product should eventually be capable of being reused rather than going to waste and going to landfill. By making that commitment to make the business cradle to cradle by 2020, that has led them to develop a whole series of new products. One that I'm thinking of in particular is called Airmaster, which is a superior carpet covering. It's eight times as effective as hard floorings in terms of absorbing the fine particles that can be so damaging, especially to people with asthma or other breathing problems. I'm also interested, and in, I'm going to trespass on Oliver's territory in terms of another interesting social innovation harnessing the market that is starting to emerge in China with a very interesting Chinese social entrepreneur, a lady called Peggy Liu. It's called the China Dream. It's a very early development stage. But the idea is to say, if 800 million eventually middle-class Chinese by 2025 consume the same way that the Americans do, if they follow the American dream, then the potential, of course, for sustainable development is put back hugely. So how do you make the idea of more sustainable consumption something which is trendy and aspirational and something that the people who are the middle class consumers want to do. And so working with a number of the global advertising agencies like Saatchi and Saatchi and Ogilvy, they're exploring exactly that question of how do you create the concept of sustainable consumption. So not trying to stop the market, not trying to fight the market, but how do you harness again in that case the power of the market to achieve social goals, the goal of sustainable development? Good morning. I feel that I may not be able to fully represent Thailand when talking about CSI in our country. And so early this month, we invited a dozen of companies in Thailand to come to this hotel and have what we call executive conversations, exactly what we are doing right now. Uh, inviting them to talk about the CSR in their companies. And we found out that um, there is a growing recognition among companies in Thailand that CSR needs to be part of the company's 
core business strategy. They classify CSR as in process, or what Ms. Hollander called embed, embedded CSR. Very ideal, because it creates value for both the company and the, chair, the stakeholders. We also find out that companies in Thailand have started to analyze the environmental, social, and economic impact of their business on their stakeholders. And in doing so, they are able to prioritize social issues and find a match between these issues and their business. This has allowed them to develop CSR strategies that leverage on their strength as a business. There are so many interesting and beautiful projects, but because of time limit, I will choose just one. I find it difficult which one, <laughs> because there's also from companies like AA, Midpon, Microsoft Thailand, uh, Petroleum Authority of Thailand, Bang Chak Petroleum, so on and so on. So I decided to choose this morning a project of AA. Not because they gave me a folder, <laughs> AA folder. <laughs> but um, because the project is very interesting and very innovative. AA is the leading manufacturer and distributor of pulp and paper in Thailand. And as a, a, a paper manufacturer, naturally, it needs to cut down trees uh, for its raw materials. The company needed to find a new approach to what Ms. Volander called uh, mitigate the negative in impacts of uh, its business. AA believes that it was important for the company to embed CSR in its operation. In doing so, they created a business model that addresses its need uh, for raw material while at the same time creating value for farmers. They tap for the project they call Kanna uh, program. Kanna is a kind of uh, a rice paddies boundary. And under this project, uh, the farmers utilize the land between rice paddies they are not used for, for rice production to grow trees, recommended by AA. And so AA does not have to cut trees from the natural rainforest. Currently, I've been told that AA has around 1.5 million farmers around the country involved in this project. And they form the backbone of raw material production for AA. And so the company's business strategies and its CSR strategy has been merged. Again, this is what Ms. Volander called bringing the internal and external together. This CSR program is sustainable because as long as the company is in operation, this initiative will continue to be a crucial part of its value chain. I can see that the leadership, the management, and the staff of AA are very proud of this project. And I feel also proud with them. This project is now being implemented in Laos, Cambodia, and Bangladesh, which are all major rice producers. It is scalable, and it is definitely sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. Good morning. Um, China is a 1.3 billion population country, and of course I cannot speak on behalf of the country, but with my previous 80 years capacity with MCM Shanghai, working with Chinese government and uh, uh, 3,000 uh, multinationals, I would like to share some of observation. Uh, complete CSR concept was introduced to China in 2005. With, uh, within eight years, you can see a huge development